Okay, good afternoon everyone. How many of you are design thinking practitioners here? Nobody? Okay, so I can get away by saying anything now. Okay, there's somebody here who knows, so Prasad will keep me honest. Thanks, thanks Prasad. I need uh, someone to keep me honest here. Okay, so design thinking has been a term that's been uh, going around in the, uh, in the industry for some time now. Uh, and of course, uh, Prasad comes from uh, uh, Infosys, where one of the recent most high profile when Vishal started the new conversations uh, within, within Infosys, it, it kind of became more mainstream. But uh, uh, the, the whole thinking behind design thinking has kind of been going around for some time now, right? So let's uh, spend some time in exploring it. Um, let me kind of uh, roll back a little bit and see how the world was uh, in good old days. Uh, just to compare and contrast so that we are able to uh, understand it a little better, right? Now, if we see, uh, there was a time 100 years back when Henry Ford said, you can have any color of car as long as it is black. Has anyone heard of that one before? So that's what Henry Ford did actually, because he was able to drive the economies of scale to the level that he could, he, when he started and the first uh, Model T was built, it was sold at about $750. But because of the economics of mass scale production, he was able to drive it down over a period of 19 years to about $168. And he was able to do that because of multiple technological innovations, and one of them being, you can have any color of the car as long as it is black, which, which essentially meant, don't ask me for any customization. Don't ask me for any changes. If you like something, I don't really care because I cannot offer you. I'll offer you only exactly what I can build it in mass scale. So that was the kind of a thinking behind uh, uh, design thinking, uh, be behind the, pro the product uh, design there. Of course, there was a time when we, we said, uh, well, you can have any, any telephone as long as it is an AT&T equipment. Has anyone been in telecom sector here? Anyone from telecom? So there is a very famous case that happened in 1964. There was a guy of name Carter in the US, and Carter actually wanted to put his own modem onto AT&T network, which was not allowed by law. So he filed a very famous case known as the Carter, Carter phone case, which actually the court in the US eventually ruled in favor of Carter by saying that AT&T does not own the network really. People are allowed to put any other equipment. So 64 was when people actually got the freedom from, from the monopoly of the old AT&T to really put something up there. But before that, for a long period in time, you literally had no, uh, no such uh, kind of an option available. Closer home, let's see, I mean, these were some of the examples in US. Now let's see closer home what, what was happening there. Anyone?